This is another relatively simple proof making use of ampersand out, ampersand in, as well as our first rule, arrow out. Here's the argument. It has three premises. One, two, three, and of course the turnstile introduces the conclusion. So we set it up. We list the premises one, two, three, conclusion down below, and we have our justification column and every premise is an assumption. And we jump in and we start. Well, what's your first thought whenever you look at a line? What's the main connective? And we see it's an ampersand. Well, the ampersand out rule we know tells us break up the line into two pieces. Because the A is true and B is true. Well, let's put them on separate lines. A, B. Justification for both of these is one ampersand out. We've done it twice using the ditto marks. I can check off line one. Line two. Line two also has the ampersand as the main connective. Therefore, I'm going to get two more lines, six and seven. And every time the ampersand is the main connective, everything in front of it goes on one line, A arrow D, everything after it on another line, B arrow E. So this is line two. I'll check it off. And justification for both lines is two ampersand out. Check them off. Okay, that takes us to line three. Main connective is an arrow. Ah, if it's an arrow, that means we're back to arrow out. I like to emphasize, the main connective tells you what to do. If it's an ampersand, you know you're doing ampersand out. If it's an arrow, you know you want to do arrow out. Well, since it's an arrow, we have to think of this line in terms of the script that I've encouraged you to use. And that script would say, if, I can find D and E on another line by itself, then I can write F. And I take a look. Do I find D and E on another line by itself? And the answer is no, I don't. Well, this is an ampersand, so I do have to say to myself, oh, that's right, we have this great ampersand in rule that allows us to build things like D and E. So if I had a D and an E by themselves, I could build this. And I take a look. Hmm, right now I do not have a D and an E by themselves. So I don't have it together right now, but moreover I can't build it right now because I don't have the parts. If you're noticing the D and the E right here right now, in some ways you're overthinking. Yes, they're going to show up and we're going to make use of them, but at the moment the main point is no, we can't work on, over, on line 3. And even though I'm over talking it, I want you encouraged to encourage you not to overthink this. So, couldn't work on three, I go to four. Four and five are both too short to be interesting. There's no connectives. Line six, arrow's the main connective. Think about arrow out. If I can find an A on another line by itself, then I can write D. Well, obviously there's my A, I found it. So line eight, I get to write D. Justification? Well, made use of both 6 and 4. So I'm going to say 4, 6, arrow out. And what do I get to check off? I get to check off 6, because I applied a rule to its arrow. OK, if I can find B, then I can write E. If I can find B on another line by itself, then I can write E. There's the B. Line 9, yes, I get to write E. Justification? That'll be 5 and 7. And the name of the rule, arrow out. OK, great. 5, 7, arrow out. At this point, I can check off 7. And if you notice, at this point, I've worked my way down. D and E are uninteresting, but I haven't gotten to F yet. So it must be time to go back up to the top and think about everything that I haven't worked on. And so I'd go to 3. Now this is where I say to myself, if I can find D and E on a line by itself, then I can write F. Before I looked and I couldn't find D and E, and I still don't have them together, but now I have a D and an E by themselves. And since I have this wonderful creative rule, ampersand in, I can put them together. D 
ampersand E. Ampersand N is a creative rule. It allows you to take any two lines that you want and put them together with an ampersand between them. However, we also know that you shouldn't do creative rules unless you know why you're doing it. So, you know, you shouldn't take just any two lines and jab them together. But we know we want to put D and E together because we know we want to work on line 3. Now, what's the justification for D and E going to be? Obviously, we took lines 8 and 9 and combined those. So that's what we're saying is 8 and 9. And then the name of the rule is ampersand in. We know exactly why we did this it's so that we can go back and do the arrow out. Let me, let me ask this question. Where did this D and E come from? Did it come from line 3? And the answer is no, it definitely didn't. This D and E came from 8 and 9. That's why we said 8 and 9 ampersand in. What role did line 3 play in the creation of 10? I like to call it the inspiration. If you're going to be creative, you should have a clear inspiration. And in this case, line 3 is the inspiration to go find D and E and put them together. All right. Well, of course, now that we did put them together, of course, we can say, if I can find D and E, I can write F. There's D and E. Now I can legitimately write F, and the justification over here would be 310 arrow out. Oh, well, F was what I was after, so I probably should have just written F11 right there and said there's the end, but, you know, I did it here, 310 arrow out. We're done.